May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, the one who gives us strength and the one who does redeem us. Amen. Amen. In December of 1972, a group of folks in the Burke Springfield area were trying to figure out what it means to live as disciples of Jesus. Like all of us, in different places and in different times, we ask those questions, what might God's will be for me this week, this day? Those questions of how do I follow Jesus? What does it mean to follow Jesus? I think before you begin tackling those questions, you obviously have to take a step back and ask, do I really want to follow Jesus? Because to follow Jesus means you have to take certain risk. You have to dare. You have to be open to change and newness of life. You have to be open to new people and strangers who come your way. So in 1972, it would have been far easier for this motley crew of Jesus' disciples to stay at St. Christopher's Church in Springfield. Instead, they firmly believed that God was calling them to a new place, a new home, a new day, a new ministry for and with new and other people. So 45 years later, here we are at this place called St. Andrews. So any time Christians get together and form something, one of the very first things they do is they have to name themselves, right? We have to know who we are. And so when they assembled and asked, what do we call ourselves? How are we going to be known to the world? They were disciples of Christ. But that name's already been taken by a denomination. So, since they met on December 3rd at Burke Elementary School, they met on December 3rd, they thought, let's look at the calendar and see what saint is remembered closest to December 3rd. And I think you all are going to be very good with this. <laughs> Join me. So on November 30th of every year, we remember... Saint Here we are 45 years later. Thanks be to God for a group of people who said yes to God's prompting, what they believed a call to new ministry in a new place with and for each other and with new people they would meet along the way. Andrew, it's a name many of us know so well. Our reverend seminarian knows that name well, Stephen Andrew. We see Andrew on the street sign. It's on our website, on our Facebook. Many of you who were pivotal key founders and supporters of this congregation, you have said the name Andrew so much, you might think Andrew was a member of your family. We know Andrew so well. It seems, for all of you especially, it seems Andrew's everywhere, right? The funny thing is that Andrew's not mentioned all that much in the Gospels. We have very few details about him. We know he was a fisherman. We knew, know the town he grew up in. But what we really remember about Andrew 
is that he was the younger brother of Peter. Peter, on whom the Catholic Church is founded, the rock, the primacy of Peter. We know all about Peter. And then there's Andrew. That's how it goes with brothers sometimes. <laughs> I'm the youngest of five in my family. I grew up with two older brothers. I can tell you they picked on me quite a bit growing up. So when it came time to naming the boys in our family, my mother decided she wanted to name us after biblical names. I'm not sure why she didn't do that with my sisters, but that's a story for another time. So she wanted to name the boys with biblical names. So when I grew up in the church, I heard these big names. David is one of my brothers. That's a big name in the Bible, right? And for Judaism, my brothers David, Paul, and Timothy. I know how Andrew must have felt growing up. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, when they write about Andrew, this is how they always consistently mention Andrew. That when Simon, Peter's mother-in-law, grew ill, whose house did they go to? To Simon and Andrew's. Andrew and Simon lived together in the same house. So as a rector of a church that's named for Andrew, I have long considered it my duty to reclaim the rightful place of Andrew among the disciples. So let's call it the house of Andrew and Simon. Andrew, who was the one who first met John the baptizer in the Jordan. Andrew, who first met Jesus. And then after he had this encounter with Jesus, he went home and gathered his brother and his family and his neighbors. Come and see. Come check this out. Come be part of it. It was Andrew who started all this. So in all due respect to my Catholic brothers and sisters with us this morning, I suggest the primacy of Andrew throughout church history. It seems Peter has gotten the top billing for all these centuries, and Andrew sort of recedes into the shadows, never to be heard from or seen. It can be like that in ministry. It can be like that in ministry. We can be tempted to think that church and ministry is what happens here this morning. With the bright lights and the spotlight, sermons that are recorded, clergy wearing fancy vestments, we might be tempted to think this is it. This is far from the ministry that we are called to. Worship is important. Make no mistake. We are here this morning primarily to worship God, to offer our prayers and praises and thanksgivings to God, to offer ourselves. That is most important. And from that, understanding of who we are, we are then called to reach out to one another, to support one another, and we are called then to reach out into the world. If you want fellowship, you can go with your friends to any restaurant and have a good time. If you want to do outreach, you can find many nonprofit organizations that do a great job and who would love you to volunteer. But we are here for a very different reason. 
and that is first to love and worship God with all of our mind and strength and soul. And from that, and from being fed at communion, we then go out into the world for each other and our neighbor. And that's what makes us different as Christian folks, trying to live as disciples of Jesus. Most of ministry does not happen under the bright lights. Most of ministry happens when no one's looking and no one's around. It's down the hall, Monday through Friday, when roughly 90 kids are running up and down the hallway and in class to be taught. And they come to preschool chapel twice a week, and they hear godly play stories. They hear the Bible. They hear the parables of Jesus. You don't see that in here this morning. But boy, Andrew is there where no one is seen. Most of ministry happens far from the spotlight when no one's looking. Andrew shows up on a Tuesday or Thursday morning in the parish hall as Amy Dutton coordinates children and mothers, children and parents who get together and spend time with one another to get to know one another as support to each other. You don't see that here this morning on the bright lights, but Andrew is there. Around 12, 15, every, most every Sunday, 12 to 15 youngins, young children, gather in the nursery as Mary Hartek leads them in a cherub choir teaching them to use their voice and song to praise God. You don't see that here under the bright lights. Andrew is down there in the nursery with the cherub choir. On a weekday, Sandy and Bo are down the road at the Echo Food Pantry taking some things that you have donated, but things that the community has donated, and they're down there way away from the spotlight, helping Echo with distributing food. That's where Andrew shows up. Andrew shows up on Tuesday mornings as Pat Conrad leads a wonderful group of dedicated teachers in our English as second or other language people from all parts of the world who come here on Tuesday morning, and at least for a couple of hours, they find some strength in being with one another. That's where Andrew shows up. Andrew will show up in a couple of weeks when we host our annual hypothermia prevention program. Far from the spotlight, in the middle of the night, even, as many of you volunteer to offer respite for our homeless neighbors. That's where Andrew shows up. In 1972, there were good folks from Burke in Springfield who responded to God's call for a new ministry, for a new time and day, with and for new people who would join us along the way, and for each other. And so here we are 45 years later. Thanks be to God. So what is the state of our church? Where is St. Andrew's in this day 45 years later? We're in a good place. We're in a good place. Yet... God is calling and inviting us to do, I believe, even more. These 45 years, as new people have walked in our doors and become part of our congregation, that's still occurring. 2,000 years ago, Andrew ran home to tell his family, come and see what's going on over here. That still happens today. That's still the state of St. Andrews. 
There were many wonderful, gifted people who helped found and support this parish. Sadly, many of them have died. Sadly, many of them have retired and moved. We're in a new day where we need continued leadership and new people to step up. We need all of you, each and every one of you, each and every one of you. We need you. We need each other for the ministry of St. Andrews. The most well-known church in Christendom is perhaps St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Some of you have probably been there. St. Peter's is in the spotlight. The home of St. Francis, the Pope, Pope Francis, it's in the spotlight, known the world over. I would suggest to you there is another church that is equal, if not greater, in its ministry, and it's a church at the corner of Old Keene Mill and Seidenstricker, known as St. Andrews. Far away from the spotlight of Rome and St. Peter's, yet called to do the very thing God calls us to do. Day in, day out. Night in, night out. Early in the morning, late at night. Called to respond to other people and to respond to each other. That's where ministry occurs. Not just exclusively on a beautiful Sunday morning in beautiful vestments with beautiful people. Andrew, that one who lived in the shadows, that one who didn't get top billing, wasn't as well known as other disciples, and his great contribution to the church and for us is that one day, after encountering Jesus, he dared to believe in this Jesus and he went home. He went to people he knew and said, come. Come be part of this. Come join us. And that is still our charge. That is still the state of the church. That is still what we are invited and called by God to do. So please join me with all of those who for 45 years did what I invite you to continue to do. Tell your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, this is a wonderful parish with some good ministry going on. But we need all of you, each and every one of you. And in the words of Andrew, Come and see. Come and see.